Getting Next.js, GraphQL, and TypeScript all working together can be tricky, but I think I've got your back. Hi, I'm Jack Harrington, a principal full stack software engineer. And in this video, we are going to set up a Next.js server with GraphQL, and it'll be completely typed from end to end. And of course, all the code is available to you on GitHub for free so you can adapt it to your needs. Let's start back in the office. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build out a Next.js server. And then we're going to build an endpoint into that using Apollo Server Micro. And then on top of that, we are going to define the schema, which means the data types and the resolvers, using a library called Type GraphQL that allows us to define that schema using TypeScript classes. Then we're gonna use the GraphQL code generator to build out GraphQL request functions that we will send to the server using React Query. If it sounds complicated, it's really not. Let me walk you through it right now. Okay, so here's our app. We've got a two-page app. This is the home page, and it's got a list of all of our adoptable dogs. These are actually adoptable dogs from the Oregon Humane Society. So let's click on Abby over here and see this is our detail page. Uh, you can see that under localhost 3000, dog, Abby, and so basically you've got two queries here. You've got a dogs query that gives you all of the dogs, and then you've got a dog query where you give it a name and it gives you back that specific dog. So what we're gonna do first is set up the server and get this home page and the dogs query running and get that all set up. And then I'm gonna show you the process of adding a new query to the system, getting that through the generator and getting that into that second page, that detail page, and there you go. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go over to the terminal and get our application set up. I'm gonna go into my 2022 directory, and then I'm gonna run yarn create next app and just call it next GQL dogs. All right, now I'm gonna run VS code on that. And here we go, a pretty standard out of the box Next.js app. Let's you know, run yarn dev on that because we're doing development and we want hot module reloading and all the rest. And now I will click on this and that gives us Next.js. Nice, okay, good to go. Okay, so having a look over at our app now, we've got pages and then API, and then within that we've got hello.js. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a GraphQL endpoint here. So basically you'll have the GraphQL server embedded in the Next.js server. And when you deploy this to Versal, you'll actually get a different cloud function for this route. So you basically be running a cloud function GraphQL endpoint. It just happens to be embedded in your app, which makes it actually pretty easy. So let's go and see what this API hello.js returns. And it just returns name John Doe. And we can kind of see that over here. Basically you give next a function handler. It takes a request, which would have any parameters, post body or whatever on it and a response. And with the response, we're sending a 200 along with some JSON, and that's just gonna go and send back some JSONs. Really nice, very easy way to make a route in Next.js. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna convert this project to TypeScript. So we're gonna go and change this to hello.ts and watch Next.js kind of freak out a little bit. Let me try and rerun it. And it's gonna tell us to do this add of TypeScript. So we'll do that. And now we'll rerun it. Okay, it looks like we're good to go. That API route still runs. Okay, so now we're gonna go build this GraphQL endpoint. And to do that, we're gonna use an Apollo micro server instance. So that's basically a, not a self-contained server, but a server instance that's meant to be embedded inside of another server, like this Next.js server. So we'll do that first, and then we'll add on top of that a schema layer that'll give us our dogs data. But, so let's start off with building out our Apollo first. And we'll do that by adding GraphQL and Apollo Server Micro. So GraphQL in this case is going to be used to parse the requests and the Apollo Server Micro is going to be the server extension that basically takes in the request from the request and then uses the schema and the resolvers to get the data and then formats that data for return. Okay, so now that we've got that going, I'm gonna go over here and create a new file called graphql.ts which means that our GraphQL endpoint is gonna be on slash API slash GraphQL. And into that, I'm gonna bring our Apollo server. Ta -da! And since it's going to be a GraphQL request, I don't want Next.js actually 
trying to parse the body of this thing. So I'm going to export a config out of this route that says that we don't want to enable the body parser. Next thing we want to do is start our server. So I'll just do that's going to give us back our start server function. And then finally, we need that request handler. So I will go and give it another asynchronous function handler. And it's going to await the start of that server. And then once that is started, it will then create a handler connected to the API route, API GraphQL, which is just going to handle our request and our response. All right, let's give this a try and see how that works. And now we can go over to API GraphQL as opposed to hello, and see what happens. All right, so we need to add a module called micro. So let's go do that. And let's try it again. And now it tells us it needs a schema. Okay, let's make a schema. So there's three different ways we can make a schema. You could use the Apollo version, which is to give it a basically a piece of text and have it automatically take that piece of text and turn that into a schema on the fly. You could use a library called GraphQL Nexus, which is kind of a functional approach to building out a schema. One of the nice things about GraphQL Nexus is it will actually export TypeScript types for you. And that's a really solid option. But I think I'm going to take one that's more object oriented in this case. I've already done the Nexus thing, so I'm going to do type GraphQL. So let's get in here and do the getting started, which will show us basically the kind of stuff that we're going to do here. We're going to be able to define object types, for example, like this recipe here. That's going to have encapsulate our data. And then we're going to be able to define classes that have the resolvers. So you define the data, and then the resolvers are what gives you the queries and mutations that you run against that data. So in this case, we're going to have one object type called dog, and then it's going to have a dog resolver that has the dogs method on it, as well as a dog method on it, which gives you the specifics of a given dog. So you can either get the array of dogs with dogs or the specifics of a single dog with dog. So what we need to do is add class validator type GraphQL and also reflect metadata. So let's go and add those. Now, one little gotcha along the way, the version of GraphQL needs to be synchronized exactly. And I think it's like 15.3.0. So might as well just fix that right now. You know, that GraphQL library, it just, it always gets me. I don't know what's going on with that. All right, let's go back to the installation stuff. And one thing we need to do is bring this import reflect metadata in. And so I'll bring that into our GraphQL.ts file. And then we need to go and make some modifications to the TypeScript configuration. So bring these in as well. In particular, this experimental decorators that we're bringing in, that's going to enable all the at stuff, the at decorators, like at object, at query, at arg, all that. So we need to bring that in for sure. And then we need to target ES 2018 at least. And then I'm just going to add on this ES next async iteratable. And now in order to try this out, what I need to do is go back over here to this GraphQL.ts file. And for the moment, we're just going to go and create a very simple schema right here. So I'm going to bring in some things from type GraphQL, including the schema builder and the decorators for resolver, query, arg, and object type. And we'll use some of these right away to create a decorated class of dog. So dog is going to have a one field in it. So we need to bring in field as well as ID. And that field is going to be a name. So every dog is going to have a name. And so now we need to have a resolver to resolve a list of dogs. So we'll create a resolver class. So we'll create a resolver for dogs called dog resolver. It's a resolver that resolves dogs. It's got one query on it. It gives you back a list of dogs right here. And in this case, it's got Bo and Lassie. So I just some hard coded data right away, just to make sure that this works. And with that resolver, then we need to build a schema. So we're going to build a schema using that build schema function. And we're just going to give it one resolver and that's that dog resolver. And now we can pass that off to our server and see how that goes. Okay. Are you finally happy? GraphQL? Let's see. Let's go back over here, hit request. 
Ah, okay, so there's one last little gotcha along the way here, and that's that we need top level await enabled. And this is a Webpack thing. It's just a language feature, and it's specifically around what we've done down here. So we just need to go and enable that. And the way that we do that is to go over here into the next config, and then we need to modify the Webpack configuration. So to do that, we add a key for Webpack, that takes a function which gets given the Webpack configuration. We then see if there's an experiments key on it. If there isn't, then we go and add one and we just set top level await in there to true and then we return the config. Okay, let's try it again. Hit refresh. Hey, cool, okay. So now I could query this over here, although I've had kind of mixed luck with this. So what I'm going to do instead is use a GraphQL extension that I have installed in my VS code called GraphQL. Nice one. And it's got this ability to give me code hinting on GraphQL. All I need to do is point it at the right server. So in order to do that, I'm going to go over here and create a new file called GraphQL rc.json. And into that, I need to give it my schema location, and that's just that API GraphQL endpoint that we just created. So cool, okay, great. So now let's go and experiment with this and see if we can actually query the dogs. So I'm gonna go here and create a new folder called source. And within source, we're gonna have our GraphQL requests, our API connector, all that sort of stuff, our generated stuff. So I'm gonna go and create a new folder in here and we'll call it GraphQL. And this is where we're gonna have our GraphQL requests. So we'll do the first one as dogs.graphql. And I'm gonna have a query called get dogs. And we'll say we want dogs. And within that, we want the name. Now let's execute that. <laughs> wow, cool, that worked right then, awesome. Okay, so this is just a nice way to be able to make queries and test them right within your VS code. You don't have to go out, you don't have to go to the browser, just really nice. Okay, so now that we know that the basic flow here works, I wanna actually get like real data into this thing. So in order to give you kind of a professional grade system, I don't really wanna go and keep on building a big old schema in here. I think that would just be ugly. So what I wanna do instead is I wanna go create a folder inside of source called schema, and that's gonna have the data as well as the object type for the dog as well as the resolver. So first I'm gonna bring in our dogs.json file, and this is actual data from the Oregon Humane Society I did the scraping on this, so you know, forgive me for the really bad JSON, but basically it's an array of different dog objects. And the important parts are like, for example, name, sex, breed, age and weeks, weight, whatever. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is model this as a dog object. So to do that, I'm going to create another file in here called dogs.ts for TypeScript, and then bring in our dog definition. And it's basically got the class for dog. There is a dog attribute class in here, shows you how to do kind of a nested class as well. And all of this is decorated using the type GraphQL stuff. The really cool part here actually is that the decorators sort of fall away. If you just wanna go and run unit tests against this, that's fine. Uh, you don't need necessarily to use these decorators and they kind of fall away if, if you're not the actual like type GraphQL stuff that's actually looking at them. Okay, so now we've got a definition of a dog. It's got name, it's got the description and the age and weeks and all of that sort of stuff. And it's really nice. All you need to do is, is just to find, okay, the TypeScript type here is a string and the GraphQL type is a string. And that's basically all you're gonna need to do. Once you've got this defined, then when we do our code generation and when we up on the UI, all of those types are just gonna get translated right through. So it's gonna be absolutely end to end TypeScript typing, really nice. Okay, so let's clean up a little bit and then go and create a resolver. Okay, so I'll create a new file here called dogs.resolver.ts. And into that, I'm gonna bring in again, type GraphQL. I'm also gonna bring in our definition of a dog that we just created, as well as the data for dogs. Now, of course, if you were doing this in production, you probably wouldn't have just a flat file of dogs like this. 
you might have sort of one of two sources. If you've got a database, I would recommend using something like Prisma. And if you've got APIs that you're talking to, well, you know, you may have API adapters for that, or you might just be using fetch to get those directly. That's really up to you. We're just going to use the dog. So let's go create our dogs resolver. And this is just like what we had before. We're going to return an array of dogs, you know, a method called dogs, and it's just going to turn that data that we got. Okay. So now let's go over here to our GraphQL and we will go get rid of what we had before this sort of placeholder stuff. And we'll import the dogs resolver from the schema. Let's give it another try here. Now I'm not going to even go look at it. Let's go over here to our dogs.graphql and see if we can get some more stuff out of here. For example, breed. All right. Look at that. Abby is an Alaskan Malamute. Siberian Husky. Cool. All right, but we want more than this for our homepage. So let's go and extend onto this query. We'll bring in the name, the breed, the age, the image. So you can put an image on the homepage, sex, weight, and the adoption fee. All right. Now we've got our query. We've got our API endpoint that gives us our GraphQL. It's all working great. What now we need to do is get it onto the client. And the way that we want to do that is by using the GraphQL request library on top of React Query. So React Query is going to manage doing the mechanics of the caching and all that. And then GraphQL request is going to do the formatting of the request for us. So to do this in a cool way, we're going to use the GraphQL code generator. So what is the GraphQL code generator? Well, the GraphQL code generator is an extensible plugin based code generator that one goes and gets a GraphQL schema for you in this case, our schema. And it also takes a bunch of inputs, which would be GraphQL queries and mutations. We got a query right here, the get dogs query, and then it applies a bunch of plugins to them. And in this case, we are going to use it to actually go and build the GraphQL request methods for us. Super cool. Okay, so let's go back over into our terminal. And I'm going to go and create a new terminal in here. And within that terminal, I'm going to first bring in the GraphQL code generator, the command line interface or CLI, as well as the TypeScript plugin, which is pretty standard. Pretty much all the plugins I've seen require this. Then we're going to bring in the operations plugin. Again, this is sort of a standard plugin. Then we're going to bring in the GraphQL request plugin. And this is the thing that's actually going to build our GraphQL request functions for us automatically. It's very cool. And then finally, I'm going to bring in the React Query plugin. Now to configure this, what you need to do is you need to go create a codegen.yaml file. So I'll go up to the top level here and we're going to configure our code generator. So codegen.yaml. And the first thing you need to do is tell it where the schema is. And the schema is in the same place that we're used for GraphQL RC JSON. We're going to use it right here. It's that API GraphQL. Then you're going to tell it where your queries and mutations are. And in this case, they are in source and anywhere within source, any files named GraphQL. You can make a GQL, whatever you want. And then you want to tell it what to generate. So you're going to say we want to generate a file in under source, under a new directory called generated, it'll create that for us, called graphql.ts. And within that, we want to tell it what plugins to use, what things to generate. So the first plugin we want to use is the TypeScript plugin. So we want to say create the TypeScript types, as well as TypeScript operations. And finally, the most important part, which would be those GraphQL requests. So this is bringing in those plugins, and you can also configure them here, but we're not going to make any configuration changes. Just going to use it out of the box. All right, so now we want to go and actually run it. We want to do the generation. So let's go over here to our package.json file, go into scripts, and we're going to add a new script for generation. So this is just going to call GraphQL code gen. So let's do yarn and then generate. And there we go. Cool. Okay, so it went off. It hit our API server. It got the schema back. It looked to see if there were any GraphQL files around. There were, and it generated some outputs from that. So let's see what it generated. It went over here to generate ah, GraphQL.ts, just like we asked it to. And now if you scroll down here, we can see that it has get dogs, and it's got the query variables and any headers and all that. It's got the GQL document, and it's got the types. So it's automatically maintained all of that. And it's even done some checking. So if I go over here to dogs are GraphQL, and I were to say, you know, name of dog doesn't exist. That's a field does not exist. So let's try and generate that again. 
Let's see. Boom, blows up. I could look at the error code, but I'm pretty much gonna know that it's, yeah, that field doesn't exist on there. So it's really nice. It's actually validating to make sure that your query is actually correct. Cool, okay, so let's generate it one more time. Just make sure it's all good. Okay, cool. Okay, let's go back over here. And now that we've got our GraphQL request, now we need to go and actually make that request from our index page. So let's go and stop this server and then bring in React query and also GraphQL request. All right, so that looks good. So what we're gonna do is we are going to server side render these pages. So we're actually gonna make the request on the server side and then let that data flow through to the client. We're not gonna make the request on the client. And so what we need to do is kind of have a, a query client that is shared between the two things. So I'm gonna make a, a source here, a source file called api.ts and it's basically gonna be our entry point for our API. And into that, I'm gonna bring the GraphQL client from GraphQL request as well as a query client from React query. And I'm gonna bring in that SDK from that generated file that we just created. And that SDK has get dogs in it. Then I'm gonna create our GraphQL client and point it at our local endpoint. And then I'm gonna export from here, get dogs, and we're gonna get that back by doing get SDK and giving it that GQL client. So that's how the GraphQL request library knows what URL to hit is by giving it that GraphQL client. And then finally, we're gonna create a React query query client. And this is going to be basically kind of shared between the server and the client code. And it's gonna have some defaults on there that say, well, when you're doing queries, then don't refetch on mount or window focus or reconnect. And that basically just keeps React query from immediately requesting the data again once it hits the client. React query just tends to do that. And the best thing to do is just to kind of turn it off if you wanna make sure that you are an SSR only application. All right, now let's go over to our app. A JS file and into this I'm going to import the query client that we just created as well as the query client provider which is from react query which is going to provide that query client down during both SSR rendering and also on the client as well as this hydrate thing what hydrate is going to do is it's all going to allow us to prefetch the query during server-side rendering and then dehydrate it and then rehydrate it on the client and so to do all that, we need, need to wrap this component in this query client provider and give it our query client, and then also bring in this hydrate component and give it the dehydrated state. And this is what we're going to provide from the page props that we're gonna create during the server-side render. So let's go over here and go to index.js and start with that. So now I'm just, I'm just gonna pare this down a little bit. So we can get rid of this class name in here I take this down to the studs. All right, cool. And in fact, we'll get rid of some of that CSS. Don't really need that. We're gonna be using Mantine for that. So get rid of all that. Okay, cool. And now we wanna do our SSR. So let's go and import. So first off, we're gonna have our React query and we're gonna bring in use query with that as long as well as that dehydrate function, which is going to take our like dehydrated Fetch result, I don't know, okay. And then rehydrate it on the client. And then we're gonna bring in query client and get dogs. So get dogs is what was returned to us from that generated code. And now we're gonna do our server-side props. So server-side props is an exported function. It's asynchronous and it returns a set of props. So what are we gonna do with that? Well, we're gonna call our get dogs. And we're gonna do that by calling prefetch query on that query client. So we're gonna fetch the data and we're gonna kind of load it into that client. And that client, you can do as many queries as you want here and prefetch them all. And then they're basically just waiting there for when the component on the page during client side time, client side rendering time asks for them. So now we've prefetched our get dogs. And then we're gonna create that dehydrated state prop by dehydrating the query client. So this dehydrated state here matches this dehydrated state here that comes in with the page props. You can call that whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it dehydrated state. And now to get access to that, I'm gonna use that use query hook in the 
component code to go and get our data. So let's take a look and see if we get some data. We'll just do a JSON stringify here. So let's start up the server again. And we'll go to the home page. And we've got our cool data. Awesome. Okay. Very nice. So now we've got end to end typing and a really nice way of specifying GraphQL queries and getting them all the way out to the client. All right, so let's put a nice face on this. And to do that, I'm going to bring in this component library called Mantine, Mantine. I'm not sure. It might be actually named after a Pokemon for all I know. I think there is a Mantine Pokemon, which is kind of ironic since the number of videos I've done on Pokemon. Anyway, a viewer suggested that this was a pretty cool component library, and I agree. Actually, I think it's kind of neat. Um, certainly lightweight. I like the way it's factored. So let's try it out. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so I'm going to stop the server here, and then we're going to install our Mantine libraries. So that includes Mantine Core, Mantine Next, which is for Next.js, as well as the form components and also the hooks. So kind of a nicely factored library there. And then in addition to that, I'm going to bring in an icon library called Tabler Icons. They're wrapped in React, SVG icons. I don't know how many libraries there are that have SVG icons. Now it is crazy. And so the first thing we want to do is kind of wrap all of the pages, right? So we need an app shell. It's going to have a nav bar. It's going to have a header on the top. And actually, Mantine uh, provides an app shell thing right out of the box. So app shell. And I'm just going to you know, use effectively this, uh, but you know, I'll walk you through it. So what I want to do is create a layout component. So I'll create a new directory right at the top level called components. And within that, I'll create a new file called layout.tsx. And then I'm going to bring in a, an app shell layout. So this is going to use that app shell Mantine component. It's going to put a header on there. And that component is going then going to encapsulate whatever children that you give it. Now we need a nav bar. So I'm going to set a nav bar property that has a link using the Next.js link functionality to home. Again, all of this stuff is on GitHub. You don't really need to watch me kind of fumble around at typing it out. So you can go and try this out for yourself just by downloading it. And then we'll have a header on the top. And the header will say Oregon Humane Adoptable Dogs. We'll have a hamburger that will open and close the side menu. And yeah, let's take a look. So let's hit save here and then rerun our server. And let's see, have we created ourselves a nice little home page? And no, we haven't because we actually haven't brought in that layout. So let's go back over here to our app and then bring in the layout. And then we need to wrap our component in our layout. So let's try that. Let's see if that works. Hey, look at that. Nice. It's even responsive, I think. Ah, cool. I mean, this whole section in here isn't exactly responsive, so. but, but the whole layout is responsive. So that's good. All right. So now we need to go and clean up this section in the middle there. And that really just comes down to using their grid layout and their cards to go and nicely format all these dogs. So let's go over here to our index page and do that. All right. So good dogs deserve a good layout. So in this case, we're going to have a grid. It's going to be a responsive grid within that responsive grid. It's got cards. The cards are going to have image an image of the dog, as well as some text. If you are a material person, this is the Mantine version of typography. And then title, again, kind of a, a typography variant. All right, so let's go replace the stringify with actually a nice piece of layout. So this is going to have a div, within it's going to have a grid. That grid is going to go through all the data, the dogs returned from the data. It's then going to put a column in there where it's on Small size is going to be 12 across out of 12, which means full. Medium, six, meaning there's going to be side by side two. And then large is going to be four, meaning three across. We'll put together a nice little key there and give it some padding. Uh, Mantine is one of those things, kind of like Chakra, where you can just put uh, margin and padding right in there on the each one of the components, you know, P is for padding. So P in this case is just going to give you padding on every axis of five. 
Uh, you could do PB for padding on the bottom, PT for padding on top, M would be for margin, MT for margin on top, you know, all that kind of stuff. Link is the Next.js link. And then card is the Mantine version of a card. You can have sections, you can have a title on there. The image is a responsive image, it's kind of nice. And then we're just gonna put in some text and uh, let's see, let's see how it looks, okay. Oh, pretty, oh, so cute. Okay, so we got Abby over here. So there you go. So this is basically part one done. This is all the way from the UI back to the GraphQL layer. We've got hinting, so if I were to go here and for example, each one of these Fs is a dog and all of that, like age and weeks and breed and fee and all that, that's all hinted for me. So it's great. I've got nice type safety all the way from the back end to the front end. So now what I want to do is I want to kind of show you all of this again, basically walk you through the process one more time by going and creating this sub page. So if I do, for example, Abby here, it's going to go to dog slash Abby and currently we get a 404 out of that. So we're going to create a, a new route for that. And a new route means a new piece of data. So we need to go all the way back to the API server and add the capability of getting just a particular dog. Then we need to go and add a query for that. Then we need to rerun that generator. And then we need to go and put together the page that's gonna show that dog. And so it's basically gonna show you what we've done already, but just again, and we're gonna add on the ability to have arguments. So that's kinda nice. All right, so one more time, this time with feeling. Let's go back over here to our source and into our schema. And so we need a new resolver. We got the data already. We know what a dog is. Now we just need to get a dog query. So to do that, we just create another method on this class. And that method is named dog. Unsurprisingly, it's also a query. It returns a dog. Uh, it could be null, which is what that nullable troll true means that we didn't find a dog with that name. And it takes an argument. So we use a decorator to specify that we have a name that is a GraphQL type of string. And that gives a map to a parameter to this method called name. And this is going to return a dog or undefined. And we'll just use an array finder to go and find that dog with that particular name. And if we don't find it, then we throw an error. If we do find a dog, then we return the dog. Okay. So now that we've got that, let's restart our server. And then we'll go and create a new GraphQL file. And this new GraphQL file is going to be our by name getter, our by name query. So it's gonna be dog by name dot GraphQL. And it's got a query in there, dog by name. It's gonna take a name, which is a string. The exclamation point here means that it's required. It's then gonna pass on that name to the dog function that we just created. And it's gonna get back some of the data that we're gonna show on the page or all of the data that we're gonna show on the page. So let's try this out. Let's actually, uh, let's execute query here. And one of the things that this plugin does, if you've got parameters, like in this case, name, it asks you for what that is. So I'm gonna say Abby. I think that was one of the dogs. And yes, we get our Alaskan Malamute Siberian Husky named Abby. Oh, she's very cute. Okay, so that's good. And now we need to rerun our GraphQL generator, right? Because we still have just get dogs. We don't have this new dog by name. So let's go back over here to our other terminal and hit generate again. And there you go. When you know it, now I've got dog by name. Awesome. Cool. So we are well down the pike. All right. That next thing we need to do now that we've got our support in the API. We know that it works. We ran it and we've got our GraphQL request method. Let's go and create our route. So if I go back over here and it's dog Abby, so what I need in the pages directory is a new folder called dog. And then under that, we're going to uh, take a parameterized page. So in this case, the parameter is the name. So you put that in brackets and then dot TSX. And that's going to take the name in this case, Abby and map it to the incoming parameter of name. Now, before we get too far ahead, we do need to go over here to our API file and make sure that our dog by name method is also exported from that get SDK and the API. And then we're going to bring in our imports. So we're going to bring in React as well as dehydrate and use query like we did before. And also some stuff from Mantine. <laughs> Basically exactly the same thing as we had before with the addition of a button. 
And then we're going to bring in our API. So we're going to bring in that query client like we did before, but also we're going to bring in dog by name this time because now it's exported from that API. And we'll do our get server side props. But this time we're going to take parameters because those parameters have the name of the dog. So we will prefetch our query of dog by name and assign that to dog. And we're going to give it the incoming params name. And then just like we did before, we're going to return the dehydrated state, but we're also going to send across the parameter. So in this case, that name parameter, because we need that to line up between those, the client and the server side rendering for the use query stuff. So now let's create our page and we will do our use query to go and get the data. And all I'm going to do at this point is just return and I'll do that JSON stringify trick again the data. So let's see what we get back. And let's export that is the default. And rerun it. And there we go. Cool, we've got our data. Now all we need to do is format it. So the first thing to do is make sure that we have the case covered where we didn't get a dog back. So we'll just have a no dog found div that gets put out there. And then we'll just start rewriting this UI. So we'll just bound the whole thing in a grid. And then within that, the first thing is going to be the image. So this is going to be the image along with an alt for the dog's name. Oh, that's so cute. Okay, now we need a column that's got all their data and their details. So put another column and it'll start off with the dog name. There we go, Abby. And then we'll have another grid within this, which has kind of a tabular feel to it. So it's got the age, the number of ages and the age and weeks, breed, so on and so forth. Let's uh, save that out see how that looks. Oh, that looks really nice. Age is 78, six weeks again. Let's go pick another dog so we can see another dog here. So, it's, uh, all right, let's go look at Milo. Oh my God. Oh, that's so cute. 11 weeks old. Wow. All right, so how do we adopt Milo? Well, we need one more button on here and that's the adopt button. So let's add another column where we have a button full width adopt and then the dog's name. So we're gonna adopt Milo. Yes, we do. So there we go. So very cool. It's responsive, just a, a really nice little app and a good starter point for you. So if you are looking to do GraphQL, Next.js, have it all SSR'd and have it type safe from start to finish, then this is a nice little starting point for you. You can just pull out all of these beautiful pieces of dog data that we got in here and replace it with whatever schema that you have. You do it all in an object oriented style and away you go. Good setup for you. So that setup in the beginning was a little bit tricky, getting TypeScript and GraphQL and XJS all working together. But I think by the end, we got something that's really workable. But if you think you can do better, I'd love to hear about it in the comments section down below, as well as any comments or questions that you have. If you like the video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new Blue Collar Coder video comes out.